<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Chief of Police, John Crowley, myself, and Ward 2 City Councilor uh, Tom Monahan just completed a meeting in my office to uh, review somewhat the events of last evening and, more importantly, uh, to bring forward our response uh, to the tragic incident that occurred last night at the James Edgar Playground. Uh, first, I think it's important that on behalf of uh, the city and all of the city officials, we express that our thoughts and sympathies are with the family of the victim of last night's uh, incident and uh, that uh, the city will be here to support them in any way that we can uh, now and in the future. The, um, you know, I'm, I'm outraged at, at the violence that took place on the grounds of the playground last night, uh, but I think it's, it's important to, to really outline the facts of where we are in terms of the neighborhood and in terms of the park and playground. Last year, we reopened and rededicated that playground after making about a three quarters of a million dollar investment and uh, that was funded by a lot of grant money that Councilor Monaghan and former Councilor Petty uh, led the way on and, and we joined them as our administration came in. But I think it was a very important day for that neighborhood when we did reopen that playground last year. And the playground and the park uh, have been a huge success since their reopening. Uh, in the warm weather months, on a daily basis, we have hundreds of people utilizing all of the facilities down there in the middle of an inner city neighborhood. And just to give you some sense, last summer, uh, we sponsored uh, two or three outdoor concerts there. Uh, we hosted an event for mayors visiting from Cape Verde. Uh, our American Legion Post 35 baseball team plays its games there. Uh, it truly, our investment in the park has been paying off in it doing exactly what we wanted it to do. And that is to reestablish and reclaim the ownership of the open spaces, green spaces in this city. The parks and the playgrounds belong to families and children. They do not belong to thugs and criminals and we will not accept anything less than that. Um, in terms of specifically last night's incident, I think it's important that I clarify some misinformation that has been out in the media since last night and also on social media. Uh, first of all, police presence or lack thereof was not a factor in any way, quite the opposite. We had a substantial police presence in that immediate area, both before and at the time uh, of the altercation. Our uh, motorcycle patrols, which just came back on the road, Chief, about a week or so ago, yes, uh, were just deployed back about a week or so ago for the warm weather months, uh, have been making routine patrols through that park and playground regularly, afternoons and evenings, um, and in fact, we had a couple of police motorcycles rolled through, right through that part of the park minutes before the altercation occurred. Um, in addition to that, almost immediately after the altercation occurred, um, the state police were there also. The state police gang unit was on site as part of their regular proactive patrols, not in response to the event. Um, so we had a police presence immediately before and again during the altercation. And then once the call came out, uh, there was an immediate response, an immediate very fast response by the Brockton Police Department. All, all officers across the city immediately deployed to that area. And this, the area was secured very quickly. Um, so there was a significant police presence there within minutes of the incident um, and so any, any that feel as though perhaps uh, the police are not patrolling the park, it's quite the opposite. When we opened that park and playground last year, we committed a tremendous amount of additional resources to making sure that we had a safe, secure environment there. It's also been reported that there were 100 teenagers or hundreds of teenagers involved, not the case. 
We had over 100 teenagers at that park and playground using it for the intentions for which it's designed that were there at the playground. They witnessed an altercation. They were not part of the altercation. The altercation was a small group of individuals, and I can't give an exact number, but it was a small group of individuals that were involved in the altercation in the immediate vicinity of over 100 teenagers who attention was immediately drawn and who witnessed what happened but were not participants in what happened. Uh, what was my other thing I wanted to dispel? Oh, and uh, I think it's also important to note, I think somewhere I heard reported that this was a basketball game that turned into an altercation. That also is not accurate. The altercation began at the basketball court, but to say that it was a basketball game that turned into an altercation is just not true. The individuals involved in the altercation were not at the park and playground for the reasons for which it's intended. The large crowd was a crowd that was already existing there of young people who are taking advantage of what the park and the playground has to offer. Nonetheless, we are not sitting back and just idling accepting this or writing this off in any way. Uh, the chief and the city council and I have just uh, spent some time reviewing with the chief additional response and additional resources that we will allocate to that neighborhood and to that park and playground area to ensure that the 99% of the good people who live in this city feel safe and comfortable to come down and use that beautiful facility. Um, Chief, do you want to address specifically some of the... Sure. I mean, go ahead. I'm going to allow the Chief to speak specifically about police resources, and then I'll have a couple of other comments, and I'll take questions. I would just say as a result of yesterday's uh, tragic incident, we have increased an already active patrol area. That's a priority, that area. We were always there. As a result of that, we'll increase our walking beats. We'll have uh, additional motorcycle patrols there along with bicycles. Um, the community police officers in that area will be out and about and meeting with the people. Um, the park is a priority and we want it to be safe for all the citizens of Brockton to enjoy. So the residents in that neighborhood will see a noticeable increase over and above what we've been doing down there. So the motorcycles will be through more frequently. Uh, we're bringing a walking beat down there. We have a community policing officer assigned to that neighborhood and that uh, spot will be uh, manned seven days a week. There'll be an officer assigned to the area. We'll run additional cruiser patrols out of that area. And also uh, as part of our meeting uh, with the city council of Monaghan and with the chief, a couple of other changes um, I have directed our IT department working with the police department to install video surveillance cameras as quickly as we can get them there. There is a little technology involved, but we will have remote wireless cameras in that park and every square inch of that park and playground will be under video surveillance as quickly as we can make that happen. Typically, we don't always tell the public where we may be putting cameras. Uh, but in this case, we're making it very clear. We want the public to know that that park and playground will be under video surveillance 24-7. We also want to reemphasize to the families in the neighborhood and the people here in this city uh, that we should not let this one isolated incident that took place dispel us from continuing to use that park and playground in the manner that we have for the past almost year now since it reopened. And to that extent, uh, Councilor Monaghan, Chief Crowley, and myself on Sunday, May 17th, will host a neighborhood block party there at the park. And we're going to invite all the neighbors and residents in the area. We'll have music, we'll have food, we'll do it on a Sunday afternoon at four o'clock, and we'll make it very clear that the park belongs to the good people of the city, and we will not tolerate illegal activity at that park or playground or any other park or playground in the city. So having said that, I'll entertain any questions you might have. Mayor, what can you the chief tell us about the incident itself, its origin, the participants, the investigation? 
not going to be able to tell you a lot at this point. Uh, at, at the point where um, the victims succumb, succumbed to their injuries and it became a homicide, the investigation immediately becomes under the Plymouth County District Attorney, Tim Cruz. Uh, what we can tell you is that our Brockton police detectives are working very hard alongside the state police detectives assigned to the district attorney's office. Uh, both Chief Crowley and the DA have assigned additional detectives to this investigation. Um, it's a very active investigation and uh, I anticipate that, uh, that they will conclude it successfully pretty quickly, but go ahead. Go ahead. I, I can't comment a lot on that other than to say um, that it would appear that groups of youths gathered at that park for not the purposes that the park was intended for. We've had a great, since we reopened that park last year, we've got so many young people and so many families using all of the playground and park facilities there. Uh, it really is becoming a neighborhood success story down there. We've made an even bigger commitment this summer, not just in terms of police presence, but we have some concerts scheduled down there. We have a Friday family night movie night scheduled down there. We're planning an event in August. We're now gonna hold the, the block party in May. I mean, the park and playground belong to the neighborhood, belong to the residents, belong to the young people. And I think it would be fair to say that the people involved in the altercation um, were not people that would typically be there using the playground. I think I, I don't have any indication that it is gang related, but again, all under investigation right now, it's a very active investigation. I don't wanna make any assumptions. I have all the confidence in the world in our detectives and the state police detectives and the district attorney um, that they are going to, uh, they're going to identify the parties and, and hold those responsible very quickly. Um, well, I think it's going to start with in about an hour, I'm going to go down the park and walk around and talk to everybody um, because I think it's important that they see me down there and know that I feel perfectly safe down there. Um, I think it will continue by us having outreach. I think that uh, once an arrest is made, people will probably feel better. Um, but I'm telling the public right now that uh, there's no reason for ongoing concern down there. This was an isolated incident that had nothing to do with what goes on. That altercation could have taken place in the parking lot at the mall, uh, in the middle of the street, anywhere else in the city. It just unfortunately occurred at this park and playground. Um, but uh, it is safe. And uh, I think the chief outlined to you the steps why they should feel very comfortable that in addition to the police resources we already have there, we're committing even more. Some people have said An officer all the time? all the time? No, I don't think that's necessary, but I think what is necessary is a very proactive police presence. I think part of the success of the motorcycle patrols last summer was that they were in and out of there all the time, but no one ever knew exactly when they were coming. So I don't think you have to be there 24-7 to have a 24-7 presence. I think it would be safe to assume that at the times of the day and days of the week when we expect the park to be used the most is when we'll devote the most resources there. No, someone, uh, the initial report came in that there were people in custody, um, but that is not the case. No arrests have been made. It's a very active investigation, um, but there are no arrests have been made at this point. Is there a person you might infer that perhaps people were questioned, but not arrested. Uh, I don't have a lot of specifics other than that they're expected to survive. I thought you were asking me about the victims. Yeah, but the victims teens? There are two. Um, do we know if they're teens? Yeah, they are. They're victims, yeah. They're teenagers. This has been a troubled area for over 20 years, that section right on there. 
Yep, so I know you're not a member of the media, so you gotta be fair and identify yourself and then I'll be happy to answer your question. Yeah, Bill Ackerman. Oh, Bill, that's right, I know you, Bill, I'm sorry. Yep. I've been, uh, you know, I'm 73, yeah. I've lived here all my life. And I used so you to actually, you live, near, you live near the Walker Playground, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. But I used to, I grew up yeah. down by James Edgar. Right. And it was a beautiful park. Still is. There, so, so Bill, there will be, there already has been since we, so, so let me respond in a couple ways. First of all, I've been mayor for 16 months. And in those 16 months, we have made a substantial commitment and investment to, um, to reclaiming the open spaces in the city, all of the parks and playgrounds, and making sure that they're being used by the people uh, that are intended to use them. Parks and playgrounds are not for drug dealers and gang members. They're for mothers and children and families. And uh, that's what they're being used for. That's what they're going to be used for. Uh, we are zero tolerance on anything other than that. Um, in terms of the police presence, there's a substantial police presence. Um, I don't think we're gonna get into specifying at exactly what times of the day and days of the week the police are there. I think it was, we already created that impression last year that there was a substantial presence, the motorcycles coming and going, a full-time community police officer assigned to that area. So in that respect, there is an officer assigned, but it's the same community policing officer we've had assigned. Um, and I think in addition to that, you look at, and, and what we did last year worked. We made a three quarters of a million dollar investment in that park and playground. Um, people came back. If you went there last summer, you saw a lot more people than you had seen there in years. The people and the families came back. They believe in what we're doing down there, and they are back. And that's why there was a large crowd there last night. There wasn't a large crowd of teenagers because they were part of the altercation. There was a large crowd of teenagers because they're down there playing ball, using the park. Um, so we're committed to keeping that. Um, I can't use the language I'd like to use right this minute to express how upset I am with what happened last night. Um, you know, we certainly are praying for the family of the victim last night. Uh, you know, we are fighting all violence in all parts of the city by all age people, and we are particularly tuned in to doing everything we can to, to prevent youth violence. Um, so I feel as though we've made a huge commitment down there. It's already paying dividends, and I think that what the chief outlined here today is that uh, we're going to continue to send an even stronger message and there'll be even a larger commitment as the chief outlined. Um, you know, this is, this is the playground and the ball field that Rocky Marciano grew up on. And, uh, you know, that's part of the great of what this city is all about. And when Rocky get hit in the mouth, he hit him back. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We, we, we got hit in the mouth last night, uh, but all we know how to do is hit back and we will as hard as we can. Yes. Yeah, we can. Refer that to the district yeah. attorney's office. All questions regarding that are being answered by the district attorney. Is it fair to say that the people that were stabbed were targeted with one another, not from the neighborhood, who characterized it in any way? I think that's all going to come out in the investigation, Rondell. I think my statement is that the people that were involved in the altercation were not there for the purposes that the playground is intended for. Was anybody hurt or killed? I, um, Brockton resident, I think that's all I know at this point. The two that were hurt, the lay students? Uh, just all we know is the ages. Are you having, uh, at this point, the district attorney is heading up the investigation, so those specific questions I'm referring to the district attorney. Can you say witnesses have been cooperative, um, being that there are hundreds of scenes there? No, I can't say. Can you have a timeline of the I think that's part of the ongoing investigation, too. That's a district attorney question. Can you give a timeline of when officers were there yesterday? So what I've heard is that there were some officers who had just left the park. Do you have the, like, the precise times and where those officers were when they got the call of this Well, I'm not even sure who made the original call. The state police arrived right on the scene. Yes, they, they arrived while it was happening. 
Yeah. So, I mean, there was police on the scene while the incident was still underway. And so these state police officers are assigned to control them. Like, what is the connection? They're, they're a state police gang unit. Okay. And they were on a proactive patrol. They responded before the police officers? They, 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 they didn't respond. They, they arrived upon the scene while it was happening. They, they were on their way there not to respond to the call. They were there as part of their assistance that they're providing us here in the city. And uh, that's one of many places I'm sure they patrol, but they were on a, on a regular routine patrol as the state police gang unit, and they came upon this scene as it was going on. So was it Brockton officers who had just left? Correct. The, Brockton, motorcycles. The, the motorcycles. the Brockton motorcycle patrol had just been through the area a few moments earlier. Okay, and so do you know how far they were? I, I don't know exactly. They weren't far. They were back very quickly. Oh. I think if you talk to any of the residents in the neighborhood, they would tell you, uh, that there was a uh, tremendous uh, response of Brockton police to that scene immediately. Um, I was there not long after it happened, but I was told by uh, neighbors there last night that they didn't realize we even had that many police on duty, that, the, that so many arrived so quickly. And they did secure the scene, and I think that that will be a positive, um, one of the reasons why I'm confident in the investigation by the DA and our detectives is the fact that we had police personnel there so quickly um, that they were able to assist victims and also identify people that may have been involved. Mayor, Last question. Mayor, how scary is it to know that teenagers are walking around with guns and knives in their pockets, uh, in, in playgrounds? Uh, I think that we are, I, I think that the issue of uh, violence in teenagers is pretty universal in cities across the country. I think we're very proactive here in Brockton and working against that on a whole number of levels. Um, and uh, I think one of the stated goals of our administration is to provide more resources toward that, starting with uh, very early age uh, curriculum in the schools, um, all the way through proactive police patrols. I think that the proper response for us is a combination of working with the community this is not, the issue of youth violence is not something that you just arrest yourself out of. We have to invest in long-term solutions. We have to have the community's involvement and all of those things are ongoing. At the same time as the mayor, it's my primary responsibility to keep the streets and the neighborhoods of this city safe. And so we also have to send a very clear message that if you do carry an illegal weapon in this city, we're gonna get you, we're gonna arrest you. And I think if there's anything coming out of our response to last night's incident, I hope it's very clear to everyone um, that we will not tolerate any of this illegal activity in our parks and playgrounds, and uh, we're committed to keeping those uh, spaces for the people for which they're intended. So Guys, the thank the you. DA, Good. The DA usually attends these conferences when there's a homicide. Is there a reason why the district attorney's not here today? I think if you ask the district attorney, he usually doesn't comment till after an arrest is made. Okay? Thank you All right. Very much. Thanks, guys.